All right, so one more example of finding the radius and interval of convergence. Here we're going to look at the series from 1 to infinity, x minus 2 raised to the n over the natural logarithm of n plus 4. So we'll do the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, x minus 2 raised to the n plus 1. And then we'll have the natural logarithm of n plus 1 plus 4, which will be n plus 5 multiply by uh, the reciprocal, so the natural logarithm of n plus 4, and then x minus 2 raised to the n. So here we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. We'll be left with an x minus 2 to the first in the numerator when we uh, subtract our exponents. And then we've got the natural logarithm of n plus 4 over the natural logarithm of n plus 5. Okay, so we can pull our absolute value of x minus 2 out front, have the limit as n goes to infinity, natural logarithm of n plus 4 over the natural logarithm of n plus 5. So as n goes to infinity, uh, we're going to get infinity over infinity for our limit. So I'm going to um, compute you know, the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural logarithm of n plus 4 over n plus 5. I'm going to compute that using L'Hopital's rule. So if we do L'Hopital's rule, we would get 1 over n plus 4, and then 1 over n plus 5. But we could just flip and multiply. So we would flip by n, uh, you know, multiply by n plus 5 over 1. So that would give n plus 5 over n plus 4. But as n goes to infinity, this limit's just going to equal positive 1. So okay, so this whole limit is just going to equal 1. So that tells us that we're going to be left with the absolute value of x minus 2 times 1. And again, to converge, the ratio test says we want this to be less than 1. All right, well, that says that negative 1 would be less than x minus 2, which would be less than positive 1. And if we add 2 everywhere, we'll get positive 1 less than x less than 3. All right, so now we're going to have to go back and check the endpoints individually in our series. So let's see, if we check x equals 1, again, I'm just plugging 1 back in, we'll get the series uh, n equals 1 to infinity. We'll get 1 minus 2, which will give us negative 1 raised to the n power over the natural logarithm of n plus 4. So again, this is an alternating series. So we have to check two things. If we take the limit as n goes to infinity, again, we leave off the alternating part. We would have 1 over the natural logarithm of n plus 4. I have to ask myself, does that equal 0? And well, as n goes to infinity, the natural logarithm goes to infinity, so this certainly does equal 0. The second thing is, is it decreasing? Well, as n increases, the natural logarithm uh, of this increased value uh, gets bigger, so 1 over a larger number, that certainly does decrease. So that tells us that our series, uh, when we go to think about the interval of convergence, we now know that 1 would be included. So now, again, we have to check what happens if we plug in x equals 3. So let's see, if we plug in if we plug in x equals 3, we'll have 1 over the natural logarithm of n plus 4. Okay, so now I'm thinking, um, does this series converge or diverge? Well, let's see here. Um, for large n, it's certainly true that uh, the natural logarithm of n plus 4, that would be strictly less than n plus 4. The natural logarithm grows much, sl grows much, much slower than does uh, just the linear uh, n plus 4. Well, that tells us that 1 over the natural logarithm of n plus 4 would be bigger than 1 over n plus 4. And again, that tells us, again, for these positive n values, uh, that the series from 1 to infinity of 1 over the natural logarithm of n plus 4 is greater than the series uh, 1 over n plus 4. 
Okay, so now the question is, what does 1 over n plus 4 do? Well, the series uh, 1 over n plus 4 is going to diverge. It would be easy to show this using, uh, you could use the limit comparison test. We've seen a bunch of these now. You could use the limit comparison test with the series 1 over n. Okay, this is a divergent P series. Uh, you can use the limit comparison test. The limit will be positive 1, which means um, this series also diverges. Since this series is uh, larger than a divergent series, that would tell us that our series in question also diverges. So a lot of work on these problems here. Um, I hate when you have to check the endpoints because it just makes all this extra work, but that's what happens. So, so negative 1 is included. Uh, positive 3 would not be included. So there's our interval of converg uh, convergence. Again, to get the radius, we can just take the length of the interval, uh, 3 minus 1, and divide by 2. That's going to be 2 over 2, or our radius of convergence uh, would equal positive 1.